So a few weeks ago I ranked every protagonist signature outfit and I saw quite a few comments asking me to make a video on the best non-signature outfits from each game. So that's what I'm going to do. So do remember the outfits that I mentioned in this video will be appearance based and are all my own personal opinion. Oh and I'll also try to give some honourable mentions on one that I just missed out. So without further ado let's just jump right into it. So let's start off with the first game of the series, Assassin's Creed 1. And well, there's not really any other outfits except for Altair's signature robes, so this is quite awkward. But I have an idea, I'm just gonna cheat and mention an outfit that's actually a mod, and that outfit is called Saladin's Elite. Now I'll leave a link down below to the mod which contains quite a few outfits for Altair. But the outfit that I chose however reminds me quite a lot of the Thomas de Carnelian robes that are shown in Assassin's Creed Unity. It's a nice all black attire with a black snood as well to cover the face. I just wish Ubisoft added outfits for Assassin's Creed 1. It would have made the overall experience a lot more enjoyable. But then again we cannot exactly fault them as this was the very first game of the series. And they probably didn't even know what to expect from this series. Now for Assassin's Creed 2. A game that unlike Assassin's Creed 1 actually had quite a few outfits to choose from. I do like how Ubisoft saw the potential from Assassin's Creed 1 and further developed it into Assassin's Creed 2. Now for what I believe is the best outfit in this game, I definitely go with the armour of Altair. In this video where I covered my favourite weapons from each Assassin's Creed game, I mentioned the sword of Altair for Assassin's Creed 2. And now to complete the Altair set, the armour of Altair is what I went with for the outfits. The actual armour itself has quite a deep meaning of lore behind it. You see Altair himself crafted it using the Apple of Eden and managed to make it super light whilst also providing a lot of protection. Just like Mario Auditore said when he gave the tour to Ezio when showing him the armour. If you actually wanted to get this armour though you'd need to complete 6 assassin tombs scattered throughout the game. But trust me, if you're watching this and you haven't done those yet, I highly recommend it. Now in my opinion, I don't think there's another unlockable outfit in the entire series that would surpass the armour of Altair. It just holds a special place in many hearts for it being the peak of Assassin's Creed. Now don't get me wrong, the armour of Altair does also appear in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, but to me it stands out the most in Assassin's Creed 2. Speaking of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, this game also had quite a few outfits just like Assassin's Creed 2, but there was a considerable amount more. There are a lot of repeated ones in this game that were in the previous entry, but I went with something that's pretty unique, and that is the Drachen armour in Brotherhood. You see throughout the entire Ezio trilogy from Assassin's Creed 2 to Revelations, I'd say that this outfit is up there alongside the armour of Altair. In Assassin's Creed lore, the Drachen armour, or as its full name which is the Helmschmied Drachen armour, was made by the Helmschmied Armoury in 1489 and was renowned as one of the finest creations ever made. I'm pretty sure the original version of this armour was deemed impractical due to the metal being so heavy. So other suits were made of this and one was also given to Ezio Auditore who we all know. The outfit itself in game however is truly stunning. It features black robes with some pretty striking red accents throughout which was also complemented by a set of white armour which to me looks more like dark silver. I'm not gonna lie, the outfit himself made him look like a rugby player with those big ass shoulder pads. But that doesn't take away from it being my favourite in the game, even if you cannot customise it since it is pretty much appearance based. I will give an honourable mention to Ezio's Florentine Noble attire, which surprisingly can be worn in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I do like how Ubisoft allowed us to use this outfit before he became an assassin. If you wanted to unlock it however, you just simply have to purchase it on Uplay for 20 Uplay units I believe, which isn't really that much. It's just one of those outfits to collect. And now for the final Ezio game, Assassin's Creed Revelations. This game took us to a whole new setting, so the outfits and armor sets throughout the game were quite different from what we've seen. So the outfit that I've selected as my personal favourite in Assassin's Creed Revelations is the Turkish Assassin armour. Now I know, there is quite a few people that might say, well where's the Brutus armour? You didn't mention it for any Ezio games. And yes, you're right. I will say I did love the dagger of Brutus, but his actual armour however, I didn't really like the look of it that much. Anyway, the Turkish Assassin armour however is one I quite like a lot, and for many reasons. It's a limited outfit which makes it solely cosmetic. Now visually the outfit in game is rather intriguing as it features a stylish white robe which to me complements perfectly with the brown Turkish armour. 
One thing that stands out however that I don't really see quite often in outfits is the inclusion of a mask which makes the outfit itself go from a solid 8 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. To actually unlock this armor in game however is quite different from just unlocking it through collectibles or quests. You just need to simply have the special edition of Assassin's Creed Revelations. Or there was another way I believe, which I think you could also just buy the Lost Archive DLC to unlock this outfit. Oh and just like Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, I do have to give an honourable mention to one particular outfit that could have easily made it as my favourite, which is the armour of Ishak Pasha, who is a famous Ottoman general. The armour itself also has a mask, just like the Turkish assassin outfit, as well as it sharing some similarities to the armour of Brutus. It featured a nice gold and black colour scheme throughout. I think unlocking this armor set was a bit tedious as you would have to find all 10 pages of the memoirs of Ishak Pasha himself and then once you found those, a challenge would unlock in which you'd need to complete to unlock the armor. Moving on from the Ezio games, we now have Assassin's Creed 3. And to be quite honest, Assassin's Creed 3 didn't really have the best outfits in the series. But on a very positive note, this was the first Assassin's Creed game that actually gave us access to a various sets of armour that each had distinctive designs and were not just reskins or recolours. Anyway, out of the few outfits I liked in this game, my personal favourite would have to be the animal spirit outfit that Connor wears. Now this outfit was a bit of a different one than what we've seen in previous games. It consisted of a unique blend of assassin armour that was crafted from bear skin, eagle feathers and also wolf pelts. It does fit the setting quite well so it did match and when Connor wears it, it looks great especially with that very unusual wolf head hood which complements the outfit as a whole. Unlocking this outfit however back then when the game was first released was different to how it is now. You see in the original version, the outfit was only available exclusively in the tyranny of King Washington DLC. But since the remaster of Assassin's Creed 3 that came out in 2019, you could now simply get it from just completing DNA sequence 6 and was actually available in the main game. I do remember many people wanting this outfit to be released in the main game back before the remaster was even a thing, so Ubisoft did listen. Oh and also, honourable mention needs to go to Achilles outfit. I couldn't put it as my favourite in this game but it is a close second. I will admit at first I didn't really like the Achilles outfit because the hood didn't look right on Connor and also the mix of purple, red, beige, blue and green just seemed a bit absurd. I mean that's a lot of colours for one outfit. But eventually I used it earlier this year when I replayed Assassin's Creed 3 and it did grow on me a lot. Now let's move on to the Assassin's Creed 3 spin-off which is Assassin's Creed Liberation. I saw a few comments mentioning that I needed to include the spin-offs and you're right, so here it is. Now I will admit the outfits in Assassin's Creed Liberation were actually quite good. There's not many but there were a few to choose from that I liked a lot. The one I chose as my favourite however would have to be the Bayou Hunter outfit. It's quite different to the other ones in the series and gives off this sort of scary face painted killer in a hood. The patterns throughout the entire outfit all complement each other well and just overall the outfit is perfect for Aveline. I do like the face paint especially, it's perfect for what the name of the outfit suggests which is a bayou hunter. In Red Dead Redemption 2 there's also a bayou area and the people around it are considered to be hunters and just crazy people. So seeing a mix of an assassin as well as a combination of the bayou fits great. Unlocking this outfit in Assassin's Creed Liberation wasn't that hard. You'd have to steal 10 assassins coins from smugglers that are seen throughout the map in New Orleans and also the Louisiana Bayou. So yeah, that's my personal favourite outfit in the game. And just like in the previous games, I'm gonna give an honourable mention. And that is a complete opposite of the Bayou Hunter, which is the lady outfit. It's a lot more elegant and has a nice shade of green throughout. There are a lot of downsides to this outfit though as it limits your access to weaponry and movement. But the special thing about this outfit is that it allows you to charm and deceive people. It's similar to the Florentine noble attire from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood that Ezio wears and fits a more immersive social stealth environment rather than an actual assassin. Assassin's Creed Black Flag This game marked a significant turning point for the franchise, paving the way for an open world formula. The game is all about pirates, so the outfits are suited for the time period. But to me there's one that perfectly personifies the time period of pirates, and that outfit is called the Pirate Cloak. Surprisingly, it's actually one of the cheapest ones and easy to get outfits in the entire game. It can basically be purchased from any shop in the game, for a very cheap price. It perfectly sums up a pirate with a massive skull at the back alongside its long flowing robes. 
The all black design from behind just looks so clean. And for me, the back of the outfit just has to be as important as the front side because throughout the entire game, we're basically playing as Edward Kenway in third person. So we constantly see the back and seeing the big red skull is so aesthetically pleasing. I don't know why but for some strange reason it reminds me of Geralt of Rivia from The Witcher 3 even though that game had nothing to do with pirates. I think it's probably the long flowing robes and now that I think about it I'd go as far as to say this outfit should have been the master assassin outfit for Edward. Many people will often brush this outfit aside but I think it deserves a spot as my favourite looking outfit in the game. I will give an honourable mention to the governor outfit though and much like the pyro cloak its primary colour is a simplistic black. If you remember Duncan Walpole's outfit from the very beginning of the game, it's kind of similar to that. It replaces the dirty blue colour for a more sleek black hue. And to me, it's much more stylish than Duncan Walpole's outfit, but it also pays homage to it. Okay now for the next spin-off game in the series, which is Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry. This is a very short game that takes around 4 hours to finish, and it focuses on Adewale, who we know from Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Since the game is very short and not a lot of time went into it, the outfits are basically non-existent. The only outfit that I can really talk about is Adewale's one, which he wears for the entire game. It's pretty standard stuff to be honest. It's not anything special, nor is it bad at all. It is a sleeveless outfit, which I do like. I don't believe we've seen any other sleeveless assassin's outfits. The navel blue matches the time period a lot, and you can just tell it suits Adewale perfectly. There's really not much to say about it. It's just a solid 7 out of 10 outfit. I do wish Ubisoft added a lot more outfits into this game. It would have been cool to see Adewale rock a selection of different attires. But then again, the game is so short that they probably didn't bother with it. Now for Assassin's Creed Row, and personally I found this game to have some of the best outfits in the series. I don't know if it's because the game focuses on a Templar, so the attire might be different, but whatever it is, there's quite a few good ones in this game. So naturally choosing one that was my personal favourite was quite a challenge, so in the end I just decided on two. The first being the Assassin Killer outfit, which god damn it's a good one. I think this outfit might be my personal top 3 in the entire series. The use of the Templar mask, the grey robes adorned with striking red accents and a red cape that consisted of a fading Templar symbol really made this outfit shine for Shay. It's great to see how Ubisoft can make outfits that are not just for assassins, because clearly this game is evident that they know how to do it, and since Shay himself in the game has some of the best animations for finishers, seeing these finishers with this outfit made it even better. To unlock this outfit you just have to redeem it from Ubisoft and I know people will complain but I honestly don't care, it's just an outfit worth having. Now for the other outfit that I chose for this game and that would have to be the 11th century Templar and once again this is proof that Templar outfits are on par with assassins outfits. In fact I would say that this 11th century Templar outfit would be the Templar equivalent of Altair's signature robes if he ever was a Templar. It's got that medieval vibe to it, complete with a prominent insignia on the chest and hints of chainmail. This outfit right here is a classic Templar look. It's the one that pops into everyone's head when they think of the word Templar. Now there is the Templar Master outfit which is quite identical to the 11th century Templar, but I feel like the missing presence of the Templar symbol really made that outfit less visually pleasing for me. Anyway, if you wanted to unlock this 11th century Templar outfit, you'd need to collect all 24 Templar maps in the game. It was quite tedious to unlock, but it's one of those outfits that's worth it. So yeah, I couldn't decide on what my favourite outfit from this game was between those two, so I just thought I'd include both of them. Now it's time for Assassin's Creed Unity, and this is the last game in the series before the outfits started to get a bit crazy looking. There's a lot of combinations of colours and even a mix and match for certain armour parts that you can use in Assassin's Creed Unity, but for the actual outfits as a whole, I want to focus on one specifically, and that is Thomas de Carnelian's Master Assassin outfit. For the amount of hassle obtaining this outfit gave me, I will say that it was probably worth it. The outfit itself is perfect for the time period. If you loved Altair's signature outfit from Assassin's Creed 1, then there's a good chance that you'd love this one too. I say this because Thomas de Carnelian's Master Assassin outfit is pretty much identical to Altair's. It's just coloured differently. The dark colour scheme and an overall mystery to this outfit is what makes it so good. There's a lot of mystery around the owner of this outfit, being Thomas de Carnelian himself, as not much information is actually given about him. He's just thrown into the law side of Assassin's Creed Unity. I'd love for Ubisoft to delve deeper into the medieval times and focus on Thomas de Carnelian himself. 
Anyway, if you did want to actually get this outfit in Assassin's Creed Unity, it required a decent amount of grinding when compared to unlocking other outfits in the game. You'd have to find all 18 Nostradamus enigmas, and also complete 3 puzzles in the armor room of Cafe Theatre. Of course, you can just look at a YouTube guide, which shouldn't really take that long. I will however give an honorable mention to another outfit, or should I say gear set, because it's not really one whole outfit. And that's called the Legendary Phantom Set. There is actually 4 tiers of this armor set, and the first one which is the tailored Phantom Set to me just looks ridiculous. It reminds me of a Wish version of Batman's sidekick Robin. But the last tier, which is the legendary one, is the one that I like a lot, especially the chest area. I don't even know what's going on with the shirt, but it looks pretty cool. Okay, so now we have the first Assassin's Creed game, where we have dual protagonists, and that is Assassin's Creed Syndicate. The outfits in this game were not the same for both Evie and Jacob, so this means I'd have to choose my favourite outfit for both the protagonists. Let's start off with Jacob Fry. There's over 12 different outfits for him, and quite a few of them are great, but if I had to pick one, I'd go with his Maximum Dracula outfit, which in my opinion is his best outfit out of all the choices. It's an outfit that perfectly blends in with the perks of the Victorian era, even throughout the misty streets of London. Jacob's combat style alongside this outfit fits together so well, and what's even better is that you can even equip additional belts to further enhance its abilities. The legendary assassin's belt in particular gives the outfit an extraordinary boost in defense and stealth, truly living up to its name as the Maximum Dracula. My only issue is that I wish Ubisoft made Assassin's Creed Syndicate so we could have a hood on at all times. Imagine the Maximum Dracula outfit with a permanent hood, to me that would look pretty cool. To actually unlock this Maximum Dracula outfit for Jacob, you just have to finish Sequence 8, which would unlock the crafting plan. And now for Evie Fry, and just like Jacob, she also had over 12 different outfits for her to choose from, but if I had to pick one, I'd definitely go with the Blue Fur Lady outfit. It's a pretty weird name I know, but the outfit itself is far from weird. In my opinion, this outfit for Evie is her best outfit by far. I know many people will go ahead and say the Aegis outfit, but that looks so out of place that it's just hilarious. Imagine the misty and dark streets of London, and then all of a sudden you see a bright glowing white outfit pass you. That would just look a bit ridiculous. Anyway, for the Blue for Lady outfit, it's kind of similar to Jacob's Maximum Dracula outfit and gave off this gothic vampire vibe to it, which suits the gloomy Victorian era perfectly. The design of it is great too, it's got a big collar which I rock with a lot, and it even has the assassin symbol embedded into the cape. Overall, it's just a great outfit. Honourable mentions though for both Jacob and Evie would have to be the Huntsman outfit for Jacob, which is similar to a somewhat detective looking outfit. And for Evie, it would have to be a simply Evie outfit. I know that's her signature outfit, but don't worry, I'm not classing it as my favourite. It's just an honourable mention. Now for Assassin's Creed Origins, the very first RPG Assassin's Creed game. This is where the outfits just got a bit outrageous and went from, you know, a variation of assassin robes to just something you'd least expect. There's so many outfits to choose from in this game. The one that I've chosen as my favourite is something you'd probably won't expect. And that is the bathhouse towel. Yes, not assassin robes, but literal towels on Bayek. So you see, in one particular mission in the game, Bayek was forced to wear these. Of course, Bayek's physique is pretty sculpted, so it's not like it's a sore sight for eyes. Ubisoft did a very good job implementing some humour into this game in the form of an outfit. It's practically nothing but a bath towel just wrapped around his waist, and another wrapped around his head. Don't get me wrong, it will make him stand out in a crowd, but it's one of those outfits that's just definitely worth having. If you wanted to unlock this very unusual outfit, you need to complete the main story quest called End of the Snake. And once you've done that, you can wear this outfit whenever you want, adding a pretty fun twist to Bayek's journey of revenge. If I was to be serious and actually give an honourable mention to an outfit that's not as ridiculous, I'd give it to the Servant of Amun. I like the style of this one, especially that unique looking mask. I don't know whether to think it's an immortal from 300 or the Sons of Harpy from Game of Thrones. Oh, and did you know, the name Amun translates to the hidden one. So that means Ubisoft stole my YouTube name and put it in Assassin's Creed. Typical Ubisoft, right? Oh, and by the way, that was a joke. Don't take it seriously. Anyway, since there's so many references to Amun throughout Assassin's Creed Origins, most commonly when Bayek offers last rites to his targets that he kills, so it's only a matter of time before Ubisoft included the Servant of Amun outfit in the game. Unlocking this outfit however required you to play the Curse of the Pharaohs DLC. You just have to complete one of the side quests called Blade or Shield. Either one works. <laughs> Ethos, Asteros,
Now for the second Assassin's Creed RPG game, and that is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This game allowed you to choose between either Alexios or Cassandra, so this means the outfits kind of look different on each other. Some outfits that would look great on Alexios would look bad on Cassandra, so that's why I'm going to include different favourite outfits for both protagonists. Let's start with Cassandra, aka the canon character of Odyssey. My favourite outfit for Cassandra was the Amazon outfit, which if you cannot tell by the name, is reminiscent of the race of female warriors known as the Amazons. I mean if you've ever watched or heard of Wonder Woman, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's even got the headband too. The outfit on Cassandra looks great. I've seen quite a handful of people and even websites that absolutely hate this outfit, but to me it's amazing. Of course I'm only referring to the appearance. I understand that the stats and buffs it gives may not be the best in the game, but that's not what I'm going for in this video. To unlock the Amazon set for Cassandra, it relates to the cultist part of the game. You just have to defeat the heroes of the cult cultist to acquire the full set. I think it's worth it, especially if you're somebody that enjoys the cultist part of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, just like me. Anyway, for Alexios, I've gone with something that's majestical, something that's stunning, and that is the Pegasus armor set. This majestical armor set is inspired by Pegasus, a legendary Greek mythical winged horse. This outfit is where Ubisoft's creative genius truly shined. The combination of white features and silver armor plates is simply perfect, making it in my opinion visually the best armor set in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's not even just visually where it shines the most, its perks and stats are great too. It's one of those armor sets that practically makes you never run out of adrenaline the more you dodge, which is perfect for somebody like me who's always aggressive in combat. To unlock the Pegasus set was quite different. You'd have to spend money for the Pegasus Mythical Pack DLC, which costs 1500 Helix credits. It's not just the armor set that comes with it, it also contains a Pegasus skin for your horse, as well as a legendary sword. Some people may not think that it's worth it, but it's up to you if you want to get it. And now for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And following from both Origins in Odyssey, the outfits, or as they're called in the RPG games as armor sets, are countless in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I may not have enjoyed the story of this game, but the armor sets are something I did like. In fact, I couldn't decide on one armor set to pick from, so I thought I'd just include two. The first one being St. George's armor, specifically the flawless version of it, so not the max upgraded one. I wasn't really a fan of that. I do like the white theme of the outfit, as well as the big red Templar cross embedded onto the back. When the hood is up is when it truly shines. It's a white Templar outfit in a way which is already quite unique on its own. The overall full armor set is aesthetically pleasing for the time period which the game is set in. The helmet however, now that gives me Eredin vibes from The Witcher 3. And if you want me to go into specifics on the armor set stats, well, two pieces of the armor increases your attack after impaling an enemy, and the full set gives you an increase to speed. Oh, and unlocking this armor set was a pain in the ass. If you didn't like the River Raids part of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you'd definitely not even want to attempt to get this. The whole armor set is only exclusively available as loot from the large foreign supplies crates located in the big military locations inside the River Rapids. Okay now for the other armor set that I class as my favourite, and that is the Reaper armor set. Visually it looks great, it's a Grim Reaper style type of armor, and if you want it to look like Death himself, this was the perfect armor set to go for. Well that's only if you combine this outfit with the scythe weapon in the game. Oh and to make this armor set look even more scarier, I changed the helmet to the druid mask. It makes Eivor look even more scary. If we're talking about perks and stats wise, the Reaper armor set is okay, I guess. It's not the best. The two piece set gives you a health bonus after a successful assassination, and the full set just slows down time longer when an enemy spots you. If you wanted to unlock the Reaper set though, you'd need to have the Siege of Parish DLC, so it wasn't quite straightforward to get. So there you have it, this video was quite a long one, there's just too many outfits that I could choose from, but in the end, the ones I mentioned in this video are what I went with. These are all mainly selected based on their appearance only. Leave a comment below on what your favourite outfit is from any Assassin's Creed game, I'm quite interested to see. So yeah, with that said, I'll see you in the next one.